Hello, it's Bonnie Stahoviak, and I am here to share about how I go about pen casting. And in case you haven't heard of pen casts before, it's built off of, of the word podcasts, which are audio format typically, although there actually are video podcasts, but most people associate podcasts with being audio. So the idea of a pen cast is that I can watch someone draw and I can actually watch it like it's a movie, actually see the drawing as it's being composed, and then hear someone's voice over it. So that's what a pen cast is. And the reason that I find it so powerful is it helps me think more conceptually about the concepts I'm trying to convey, to try to break them down from very formal definitions into something that would be more memorable. It helps me with sequencing. It helps me with mind mapping a class, mapping concepts together. There's all sorts of benefits I find as an educator, and my students really, really appreciate PenCast. They talk about it regularly as something that helps both struggling students as well as those who are excelling in a class. They will attribute it as one of the primary reasons that they are able to comprehend the information and then able to apply it. And I just showed you a couple of examples of drawings. I'll be showing a few more as I go, but one of the things I recently started to challenge myself with, and again this talks a little bit just about how I put together classes about a year ago as of this recording I was asked to teach a class for the first time and whenever we do that there's just a, a difficulty of figuring out what is not essential that's perhaps prescribed by a textbook or by experts some kind of professional association and I'm a firm believer that we get ourselves into trouble when we try to cram too much into our classes so this is a drawing of everything that I convey in this 15-week class, everything that we talk about, everything that we learn about. And I was able to, through doing this, help see how everything connected with the other concepts, and it all came down to this concept of value. Everything in the course, everything in this drawing, everything in the textbook, all maps back to here. And what this drawing allowed me to do was just think of the course more holistically, and then what parts I needed to teach, and then come back to a whole. And this is something in instructional design we can teach the parts first, but sometimes it's hard for people to learn that way, so we can also teach in a whole part, whole format. We start out by looking at what is consumer behavior, and then we break down each one of the components. In this case, we talk first about value and what it is, the internal influences on the left arm, which I guess is this person's right arm, but if you're looking, <laughs> look on the left hand side for you, on the right hand side, etc. So whole part whole. And the same drawing that I have here goes into, of course, a lot of detail as we go, but once we've done the whole, then we break it down and start talking about some of the parts of the whole, in this case, internal influences, two kinds of value, and so on. Let me talk a little bit about some of the tools that you will need if you would like to start pen casting. First off, you will need a tablet. A the one I'll talk a little bit about the one that I use, but but there certainly are multiple ways to go about creating a pen cast. You'll need some kind of a stylus. A stylus is something that will let you write on a tablet. And you'll need some kind of an app that will facilitate two kinds of recording. One kind of recording would be the actual recording of the pen strokes as you make them. And the second kind of recording would be some kind of audio recording. The tools that I use, I use an iPad Pro. I use an Apple Pencil, and I use an app called, some people say Doseri, some people say Dokari. Uh, you can call it what you'd like, but it's a really excellent app to create pen casts from. I'd like to talk just briefly about the Apple Pencil. It is, I've been using styluses, stylized, 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 I don't know the, the appropriate uh, how we talk about multiple styli, styluses. Um, anyway, I've been using these devices for years now, and the Apple Pencil is 
like none other I've ever used. You take it out, you take it out, you start writing. It just works. It's amazing. And it writes so smoothly. It is, I actually find it, which I've never been able to say this about any stylist before, I find it more useful than writing with pen and paper. And I could never say that before. Speaking of which, I've had a long history with pen casting. I used to use what are called smart pens. And smart pens are where you're actually writing on a notepad, a physical notepad. Oftentimes the paper itself is special in some way and there's a camera inside of the pen and the camera therefore knows where it is in relation to the special paper that you're using. I stopped using it a few years back, first of all, because the of advances like the Apple Pencil, it's just so easy to do it right on the device, but also they just haven't been very good about their outputs. And by that I mean, yeah, I could create it, but as far as sharing it, could I put it in the video format that could be put on YouTube? The answer was no, and I just got really frustrated with dealing with that proprietary format for sharing that they had that kept changing over the years and wreaking havoc in my life. When you're going to prepare to create a pen cast, the first thing that you'll need to do is to figure out what is it you're going to draw. And I typically do this uh, actually with a pencil and paper. I say a pencil because I oftentimes need to erase as I start to think about what are the main topics that I need to talk about and then what are the ways that I can make the ideas I'm going to convey visual. When students take exams, for example, they will tell me that they see these images in their mind as they answer the question. And an example of this would be the top right hand corner. These are the different factors of production. And they'll say that they see that cloud and the sun and they're able to remember oh those are natural resources and then they see the computers and the buildings and the money oh that's capital it's the pictures that they see and and the way in which they're drawn and even the location in which they're drawn and you can tell pretty easily on this one there's three main things we're going to talk about there's just a definition of economics in the upper left hand corner it's both a financial and a social system you can see that we're going to talk about these factors of production actually there's a little bit of just the definition of economics in the top right that I squeezed in there and then at the bottom here the three goals that all world economists economies share. And again, I encourage you to do this just on pen and I mean, you could do it on, on your tablet as well, but I just kind of like the feeling of sketching and getting a sense of what I want to do before I actually pick up any devices to draw it for the, I'll have a drawing. I'll know, I'll know where I want things to be approximately how large they'll be. And then I actually do the recording. Now, the recording, it was really hard for me to understand how this worked inside of Doceri, and I'm speaking specifically of that. There are some apps that record you while you're drawing and talking at the same time, and as someone who has done this for a really long time, I can tell you it is extremely hard to draw and talk at the same time. I, I don't know if it's just me, but it's, it's very, very hard. So one of the things I like about Doceri, but wasn't completely evident to me at at first is that the first thing you do is draw and then you play back your drawing. Think of every pen stroke or in this case Apple pencil stroke that you make being recorded by a video camera and yes friends who teach uh, digital cinema, cinema, yes, I know that that's not what that's called anymore, but bear with me. Every one of those keystrokes is being recorded and then you play it back later. So I, in this case, I would draw everything that you see here, and all of that would be recorded. Now, one of the things, of course, you have to think about while you're drawing is what order are you going to be talking about these topics later on? And you can see here that first I'll be talking about globalization as one of the changes in consumer behavior. And so I would draw this top part of the globe. I would draw the bottom part and... Then, oh, number two, oh, I'm going to talk about technology, so I'm going to draw this part next. Oh, got to draw this economics part next. And then, oh, got to draw this demographics part yet. So it does take a little bit of time sometimes to think about the order of the drawing that you'll be doing. 
And the nice thing is you can, it's pretty forgiving. You can go back and fill things in and, and as you're actually doing the recording of your voice. But for now, it does help to think about, oh, I'm going to draw this, but what order do I want to add those objects in there? So we've done the recording that happens automatically. When you pull up a new drawing in Docera, you start to draw, your every keystroke is being recorded, even though that was not evident to me. Then what you do is you play back that drawing video. This is what you see here is just half of this example that they have posted on their website. So imagine that I've already gone in and I've already done this drawing for this particular problem set and I'm going to now play it back so that I can record my voice over it. And the nice thing is you have these controls up here that I can press play but I also can press pause and pause the recording if I need a little bit more time to explain one of these elements that I've drawn. We've now gone in, we have done our necessary preparation in terms of creating what our drawing is going to look like when we actually draw it inside of Doceri. We've recorded our drawing itself and thought a little bit about the order in which we want to present that information. And then the last thing is to actually record our voice on top of it. And while we're playing back that animation, we can record our voice and have those two things synced up when we finally produce it as a video. And it's really nice, right inside of Doceri, I have a number of different ways I could share. And I don't have all of the services off the top of my head, but the most common ones are there that you might expect, including the two that I use often are Dropbox, that's my primary cloud-based service. And then also, how nice is this? It'll, it'll play it, or it'll publish it right into YouTube and you have some settings that you can actually do right from within Doceri, which is usually what I will do. So I've got my pen cast, and I've done my drawing, I've recorded my voice, and then I'm able to get it right over into YouTube, which is where I primarily play back or make available all of my pen casts. Now, I'm not a big public YouTube user. It's just not something that I have had bubble up to my list of priorities. I've got a ton of videos, but they are almost all unlisted. Unlisted videos are ones that don't show up on my channel. If you go and search for me as far as my YouTube account, you will not see it on my channel. You wouldn't see it if you went up and looked for pen casts about consumer behavior, or, or in this case, this is a different pen cast for a different class. You wouldn't see it ever in the search results or ever in my channel. The only way you would ever see this video, this pen cast, would be if you went to this link down here. And so, yes, I am realizing as I record this, that some of you could pause the recording and go type in these exact letters and find the mystery of why I've drawn Mr. Potato Head for this particular pen cast. But to me, that having that type of security just isn't necessary. What I do is I take this YouTube video, I use the embed code from inside of YouTube. It's right under the share button, share and choose embed. And then I can use that embed code in my learning management system and the students are none the wiser. I mean, yes, they'll know that they're watching a YouTube video, but they see it all from within our learning management system. And that's what the embed codes allow us to do. As I wrap up this video and pen casting, just a couple of other thoughts that I want to share with you or techniques that I use. One is that I've mentioned about my own process of drawing pen casts, but in many of my classes, it's actually part of their assignment to draw the pen cast. So they watch on their screens the video being drawn by me, and they're expected to draw it on pen and paper, and then they actually, in our learning management system, it's super easy for them to just click to share a media from their webcam, and they just record themselves holding up their pen cast drawing, so there's a little bit of accountability in there that they've actually watched the pen cast. That is something I do not do in upper division classes, but it is something I do, and actually have been thanked by students for that little bit of accountability. They say they probably wouldn't have done it 
if I didn't instill the importance. And it's a very small stakes assignment, just something to encourage them to have the discipline of watching the assigned pen casts each week. So, and then the actual drawing of it helps them be better able to retain than if all they did was passively watch it. And then one other thing related to passively watching it, my best pen casts, and I'll say I'm still nowhere as good as I'd like to be, but my best pen casts require some sort of interaction with the student. So they're drawing along with me, but I might say in this particular one, have a look in the lower left-hand corner at that shopping bag. I'd like you to think about a company that you have strong relationship quality with and write the name of that company right to the left of that, right to the left, <laughs> over to the left of that shopping bag that you see there. And then pause the recording and write down three reasons, three factors that you think contribute to that strong relationship quality with whatever company came to mind. Those are my best pen casts where they're able to make it relevant to them, to their lives as we go along. And they're not just either passively listening or even passively drawing. It takes it a little step further. And then I'm able to go and look at their responses to some of the questions that I pose and bring their answers back into the class in some way. So that would be a challenge I'd have for you. Again, I'm not exactly where I would like to be yet either, but ways of making these pen casts more interactive. And then the last thing I want to share with you is that we cannot have pen casting or whatever endeavors we are doing for creating more creative content. We cannot have perfection as our aim. And I'm sharing this screenshot of a video by a man who I admire so much, Mike Wesh. He's an anthropologist, and he made this incredible video called The Sleeper. And it's a, he says, it's a true story about a student who slept in my classes for years. This is what happened when I confronted him about it. It's just a three-minute video. And then right after that in the description, he says, my first animation. And that frustrates me so much to think this video is amazing if you go and watch it. And I think that's his first one. I've been pen casting for years and my drawings are nowhere where I would like them to be. I can tell you they've come a long way, but I can tell you I never would have started pen casting, let alone got slightly better at it over the years I've been working at it, if I hadn't allowed myself to be vulnerable and to say, no, I'm not the best artist that there is, but I have seen marked improvement and the students don't care. They love when we're human. They love when we have faults. They love when we are willing to risk our own egos to connect with them in some ways. And by the way, as a side note, that's one of the reasons when I sneezed one time when I was recording a pen cast, I decided not to go back and re-record. And the number of students who commented how hard they laughed, they'd email me or they would tell me in class the next time they saw me, that's what our students are looking for. And I'd encourage you to bring that into your own pen casting. And if you go about creating a pen cast or you already have, I would love to hear from you and have the opportunity to share some sample pen casts out there with people in the teaching and higher ed community. And just thanks so much for checking in on this How to Pen Cast video.